All right, so let me start. So first of all, uh, thank you for having me here today. I'm Susumu Sato at Hitotsubashi University. The paper I present today is titled Asymmetric Platform Oligopoly, joint work with Martin Pite at the University of Mannheim. In this paper, we tried to propose a tractable model platform competition in oligopolistic market where platform define their sizes. So let me go straight uh, to the introduction. So in recent years, we have seen the emergence of large digital platforms, as you know, um, including Alphabet, Amazon, Apple, Meta, Microsoft, and so on and so forth. Um, sometimes some of them are called as big tech. And they are increasingly scrutinized by legislators, competition authorities, and regulators. And actually, um, regulators worldwide propose or enact uh, regulatory measures to regulate these big platforms, including EU, US, actually Japan, and other countries. And from the academic viewpoint, to assess these policy, policy interventions, we would often need a model of asymmetric platform oligopoly. But here is the challenge faced by a literature. So at least at the time uh, where the handbook chapter um, platform competition or two-sided market is written in 2021, uh, the chapter says that the literature still lacks a tractable model of platform competition in asymmetric markets. So to address this issue, uh, we develop a tractable model of asymmetric platform oligopoly. This is what we are gonna do. So how we do it? So we develop a model of two-sided platforms with single homing users. So this is a kind of standard model platform competition. And we impose some specific structure on the model to make the analysis easy. Uh, that is, we impose logic user demand structure, and we impose the shape of network effects to logarithm network effects. Then we analyze platform competition in membership fees. With this structure, uh, we can make the platform competition into the aggregated game. And by doing so, uh, we can be able to analyze various asymmetries between platforms in a tractable manner. So using this analysis, uh, we do several comparative statics. Uh, actually, we did many, but for today's talk, I discuss two things. So one is, the competitive effect of an exogenous entry of new platforms. So what happens when a new platform enters? And another is the effect of the changes in behavior or characteristics of incumbent platforms when many potential entrant platforms endogenously enter into the market. We do, uh, I talk about these two analyses. Here is a preview of the results. So the analysis of exogenous entry shows that in our specific setting, the entry of a platform always benefits at least one user group in the two-sided market. But when platforms compete, uh, we can always find an entry that lowers the surplus of one user group. And actually this is the case regardless of pre-entry market structure. So this means that from any initial market conditions, we can always find a type of entry that is bad for one specific group of users. And in the analysis of incumbent platforms with endogenous entry, we found a somewhat strong, strong result, which we call strong CISO property, stating that any shock to incumbent platforms characteristics benefits one user group, but has the other. So this suggests 
a trade-off uh, between the surplus of two user groups uh, under the entry of new platforms, uh, proposing a tension to a regulator regulating incumbent platforms. So from now on, <coughs> sorry, so from now on, I introduced some model and the equilibrium characterization to uh, show how we get these results. So the model of model is a uh, uh, standard two-sided markets uh, model. We consider M more than one platforms serving two groups uh, indexed by A and P. And each user group has unit mass of population. And each user group, uh, each user in each user group uh, choose which platform to join in the market. And an example that fits well to our specific modeling feature is the competition between uh, software packages in which uh, business and private users choose which software package to use. And these users are subject to different types of network effects, like this. So on user side, users choose which platform to join. And the way users join platforms, uh, we assume that users are single homing, so they don't join more than two platforms, more than one platform. And users have no outside options, so they have to join any platforms. And users' utility from joining a platform depends on three things quality or price of the platform, and number of group A and the group B users who join the platform. So this is network effect. And each user's idiosyncratic taste for the platform. This generates the differentiation between platforms. Specifically, uh, user utility from joining platform I is given by two components. One is the maximum utility offered by platform I in this uh, figure, where AAI uh, represents the quality of platform offered to group A users. PAI is the membership fee uh, charged by platform. And Epsilon AI is the idiosyncratic taste for each user to join platform I. On top of that, um, user utility is adjusted by network effects. Um, this alpha A log MA. So this network effect is uh, log is the number of users joining the platform. And MAI is the mass of group A users joining platform I. So this is the within group network effect. There is also a cross group network effect where user utility depends on the number of group B users joining platform I. And this beta A log NBI represents this. Um, I assume several uh, structure on this. First, we assume that the epsilon ki follows um, standard type one extreme value distribution to generate logic demand structure. Secondly, we assume that network effects parameters alpha and beta are non-negative. Um, this is not necessary, but uh, we assume it anyway. And finally, we assume that network effects are not too strong in the sense that any combination of alpha and beta doesn't exceed one. So our model captures several uh, special cases in a simple way. So first, uh, we can represent traditional network goods by just uh, incorporating within group network effect. If we want to think about e-commerce or mobile OS platform, uh, in the simplest way, uh, we can just think about cross-group network effects in this way. And if we want to think about social media, uh, 
if we assume there is no other new instance stuff, then we can think about the case where uh, users uh, enjoy within group network effects and advertisers enjoy cross group network effects. So we can capture um, several um, important examples um, in moderately plausible ways. So this is a user site. The next thing is the model platforms. We assume that platforms incur constant marginal cost for serving group K users. And this can be uh, negative or positive. So whichever is fine, but uh, we require this to be constant. And the profit of platform I is given by the sum of the profit from two user groups, where the profit from each user group is given by the number of users joining the platform times the markup charged on that uh, group. And here, the number of users joining the platform I will be realized as an equilibrium outcome. <laughs> and finally, uh, each platform says membership fees, PAI and PBI. This is the setting about the platform. So to conclude the model, uh, let me discuss the timing and the equilibrium concept, which is also part of standard. The timing is that uh, platforms first simultaneously set prices. And then observing these prices, um, each user also observe uh, its own idiosyncratic taste for joining platforms. And then users independently and simultaneously decide which platform to join. <clears throat> So this is a two-stage game, and we uh, adopt a standard equilibrium concept, subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. But to address the multiplicity in participation game, second stage, uh, we require the asymptotic stability of best response dynamics to rule out some crazy equilibrium in participation game. So using this model, we propose uh, it provides the equilibrium characterization. Yes? Just, just to slow you down in two respects. Uh, I mean, the, the a big part of the contribution is asymmetry. So the, yes. the, the asymmetry here is coming in. It, it just, all right, just... all right. Yeah, that's uh, important question. So asymmetry comes from two sources. One is platforms can define the cost for serving two groups of users. And another thing is platform can define the qualities that the platform offer to each user. So platform can define quality AAI and cost CKI. That's the source of asymmetry in our model. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And, and, and a, a second yeah, Thank question. you for clarification. A second question I had just with yes. respect to, I mean, maybe maybe this is going to be relevant when you get there, but when you talk about entry, uh, mm -hmm. then then I'm, we're thinking about a, a new equilibrium emerging, a new static equilibrium emerging, or we're taking as given where the platforms have been and, 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 and changes relative to that. So for the network effects, that makes a, uh, a difference. So um, when we think about the new entry of a platform, we just compare two different uh, static equilibria. Okay. Yeah, thank you for clarification. So we are gonna analyze this model. So let's uh, characterize the model in a backward way. So in the participation game, the second stage played by users, users join one platform among M platforms, given the prices set by platforms and the expected or equilibrium network sizes and uh, take each user's taste shock. And we 
use participation equilibrium, the word participation equilibrium to express the Nash equilibrium in this game. So let me explain uh, the network allocation in this game in a simplified manner. So in a standard logic demand, uh, the way the demand is determined is like this. So the average net utility offered to each user is AKI minus PKI, or in this figure, AAI minus PAI, or ABI or PBI. Uh, just this determines uh, the market share of each farm or platform. And this average utility is transformed by taking exponential. And this exponential go to the numerator of market share and denominator just has the sum of these exponential over the platforms. In our model, Network FX amplify these average values using network FX. Uh, um, specifically, this AAI minus PAI stuff are amplified by these coefficients, gamma AA, gamma AB, gamma BB, and gamma BA. And where this gamma stuff, gamma KK, uh, is a coefficient that uh, represents the effect of uh, within group network effects, and gamma KL represents the impact of cross group network effects. And these average values on two groups are transformed into the weighted sum or linear sum of average values for each user group. And finally, the network size in the unique asymptotically stable participation equilibrium is calculated by the logic formula using this amplified average value. So on the, denom uh, on the numerator of network size in the equilibrium, the uh, numerator has exponential of this uh, amplified value. And on the denominator, we have the sum of these exponential of these amplified values. So with this simple way, we can get the closed form formula for the network size in a unique participation equilibrium. Then letting HKI to represent the numerator and cap HK to represent the denominator of this uh, demand formula, we can express the network size in the participation equilibrium as a small HK over cap HK. Then using this demand characterization, uh, we go on to the analysis of uh, price competition uh, played by platforms. In the pricing game, platform profit is given by the profit from two, group use, two user groups, where the profit from each user group is given by the aforementioned demand times the markup charge to each user group. So in uh, taking this as a payoff function of the farm platform, uh, we consider pricing game played by platforms where platform sets prices on each user group. So here uh, we transform the model of price competition to the uh, aggregated game. So specifically, we can express the prices of platforms as functions of uh, HAI and HPI in this specific way. So the specific expression aside, um, by appropriately choosing PAI and PBI, we can achieve any combination of uh, HAI and HPI this way. Then each platform's profit can be written as a function of HAI, HPI, and the sum of them, cap HK and cap H, uh, cap HA and cap HB, where the profit from each user group is given by 
uh, the ratio between small HKI and cap HKI times uh, markup charged on each user group where price is calculated from these H values. Then um, by using, uh, by exploiting the logic structure and aggregative game feature, we can do, we can obtain several results on the equilibrium and the best responses. So first, um, with this model, we always have unique best response um, for each platform, uh, given any actions of other platforms. And using the optimality condition of uh, pricing, we can define the already defined implicit best response function, uh, which is a value of HAI and HPAI that is consistent with the value of aggregates uh, HA and HP. Then in the equilibrium, we must have these two relations. So the sum of implicit best responses given HAI, uh, cap HA and cap HP uh, should be consistent with the original values of cap HA and cap HP. So implicit best responses should uh, be consistent with the value of aggregates. So here, uh, unlike the standard models of platform competition or platform oligopoly, uh, our equilibrium condition is just two dimensional. Usually, uh, um, platform competition with M platform in two sided markets should feature two times M uh, equilibrium conditions, but we can reduce it, it to two dimensional problem. This makes the analysis easier. So thanks to this structure, we can get a sharp characterization of the equilibrium. First, uh, we can guarantee that there are always is a price equilibrium. Furthermore, the structure of equilibria is in a sense nice. So in the case of multiple equilibria, we can rank different equilibria in terms of user surpluses in this way. So if we have we pick two equilibria with two different user surpluses, then if one equilibria features higher user surplus on group A, then we can show that such equilibria features lower group B user surplus. So in that sense, in that sense, um, the higher the user surplus on one group in one equilibrium, the lower the user surplus on other group that equilibrium obtains. And finally, if we consider the extremal equilibria where the equilibrium under that equilibrium, a user surplus on one side is uh, maximized or minimized, then uh, such equilibrium is stable. So we can do comparative statics uh, using these ex extremal equilibria uh, in a safe way. So what these analysis so far uh, suggests is that uh, with this model and aggregative game analysis, we can uh, safely analyze model and we can do many comparative statics analysis, which is what we are gonna, we are gonna do from now on. Uh, before going to the comparative statics, uh, let me talk a bit about pricing. Ah, yes. So to, to be clear, it, there's not a claim that the extremal equilibria are the only stable equilibria. There, there may be other stable equilibria. Ah, yeah, there may be, right. But um, we just talk about extremal oh, that's equilibria. Fine. That, that, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, just to clarify. Yes. Yeah, thank you. So we have shown that um, with aggregative game analysis, uh, we can establish nice properties of equilibria, but uh, aggregative game analysis is in a sense silent about pricing. So we 
uh, rewrite equilibrium conditions in terms of prices here. So at the optimum or equilibrium, uh, price cost margin satisfies this simple formula, which is a sort of generalization of pricing under logic demand. So here, price cost margin has two components where a market power term is represented by this orange term, one over one minus 10. This represents the ability of the platform or incentive of the platform to set price above or below marginal cost. And because there is network effects uh, to the extent that platform benefits from expanding networks, it has an incentive to lower prices further. And eventually these uh, network sizes are endogenous variables and platform heterogeneity determines this price cost margins uh, through this price formula for price cost margins. So now let's go to the comparative statics. So in the analysis of exogenous entry, uh, we consider an entry of a new platform zero with uh, AK0 minus CK0 being VK0. Actually, this difference net value is uh, sufficient statistics for many uh, equilibrium outcomes. And we, yeah, as asked by Heskey, uh, we recalculate the equilibrium uh, with new platform and examine the effect of entry on uh, welfare. So we examine the effect of entry on consumer surplus or user surplus on two groups of users. And what we find is, uh, as I said in the introduction, entry always benefits at least one user group. In addition, in symmetric markets, entry always improves the surplus of all user groups. Uh, one thing to note is this result uh, heavily depends on our logic and log specification. And this is not generally the case with more general uh, case of heterogeneity and network effects. So one new thing we found is there always exists uh, the type of new entrant such as that entry reduces the surplus of one user group. So this suggests the possibility of user surplus reducing entry regardless of market structure. So how this can happen? The mechanism is, uh, one mechanism we identified is the entry of specialized platform. So suppose that platform obtains post entry, almost zero market share on group A, but strictly positive market share for group B. Then, Roughly speaking, incumbents will get lower network size on group B, but uh, almost a similar size on group A. Then group A price would rise because of the reduction in subsidization incentive triggered by the reduction in NBI. Finally, uh, what happens to group A user utility is two things. First, because the size of uh, platform I on group B uh, decreases, the network benefit uh, declines. This is bad for group A users. On top of that, group A prices set by platform rises. This is in, uh, again bad for group A users. So through these two mechanisms, uh, the entry of a specialized platform would lower the surplus of group A users. So in the sense, uh, the entry of specialized platform into the two-sided market is uh, some risk of reducing user surplus on uh, one group of users. Next thing we analyze is uh, the endogenous entry situation and analyze the impact of the changes in the characteristics of incumbent platforms on welfare when new platforms can endogenously enter until their profit becomes zero. So to do this, we suppose or extend the model to incorporate that in addition to cap MI incumbent platforms, um, 
ME, cap ME symmetric potential entrant can enter until its post entry or uh, entry profit becomes zero. Or yeah, post entry profit equals the entry cost. In this case, uh, cap ME is determined by the zero profit condition where the post entry profit is determined by the value of equilibrium aggregate on two graphs. Then this zero profit condition pins down the relation between two aggregates through one equation. And I forgot to mention, but uh, the user surplus in this model depends only on the values of the two aggregates. So these two aggregates determine the value of user surpluses. Then what we found is something we call strong CISO property, stating that user surplus on group A increases with the quality or cost of incumbent platform if and only if the group B user surplus decreases. So it's a kind of strong CISO relationship. Um, this holds under mild sufficient condition. So this means that any change yeah, actually we can show that any change in the reaction functions of incumbent benefits one user group, but as the other. So as a policy implication, this result suggests that optimal regulation of incumbent platforms may depend on the consumer welfare standards. So it depends on the way the regulator weighs the surpluses of different user groups. So these are the main analysis we wanted to talk about. But other than these analysis, we did several things, including cross-section comparisons. So we look at, we take one equilibrium and compare the outcomes, such as prices set by different, pri uh, different platforms within a single industry. Another important analysis we have done is the effect of partial compatibility on competition and welfare. And we found that the partial compatibility uh, in the way modeled by us generally lowers the platform asymmetry by reducing network effects. And sometimes because of that, uh, prices set by large platforms may decline. So in a sense, partial compatibility may be competitive in highly asymmetric markets. We also consider some extension or another model where platforms set prices only on one side. And in our model, this setting is reduced to the case of uh, within group network effects. And actually we show that there exists a unique price equilibrium and comparative statics can be easily done with within group network effect model. And finally, uh, we tried to relax full coverage assumption to some extent by introducing partially covered markets. We discussed two ways. <laughs> One is to introduce the outside option that delivers constant value as done in many standard IO models. And another way is to consider the outside option as a non-strategic platform. So there are network effects in the choice of uh, outside option, but they are not strategic and they don't set prices. So this non-strategic platform can be thought of as open source software or something like Wikipedia. So let me conclude. So in this study, we propose a tractable framework for studying oligopolistic competition between asymmetric platforms. And we provided several predictions of entry and incumbent redesign and uh, free entry. And we did several other analysis in the paper, like cross-section analysis, partial compatibility, and the partially covered market. So finally, let me discuss the relationship to the literature. So first, our study is related to logic demand literature because the demand function we derived is a kind of generalization of logic demand. 
by incorporating network effects. And on supply side analysis, our analysis is related to aggregated games analysis of oligopoly, uh, including Knock and Shift and Anderson, Elk and Pichini. So finally, our paper is related to a large body of platform competition, specifically two sided platform competition, uh, including a general model of symmetric oligopoly of Tang and Chu, uh, competitive bottleneck model of Anderson and Pipe, and multi homing model of uh, Tay Liu, Wright, and Chu. Uh, so at the conceptual level, uh, our contribution is to uh, give a model where there is two dimensional aggregate in an oligopolistic setting so that we can analyze two sided market platform competition and aggregative game uh, analysis at, at the same time. Okay, that is all I prepared, and I think it is good time to stop. So let me stop here and uh, I hope, uh, yeah, I welcome any comment is welcome. Thank you. Thank you, awesome. So before we open it to the to the floor, I'm gonna ask uh, Bruno to give a discussion and then uh, we'll take uh, questions from, from, from anyone who has questions, but thank you for a, a very clear and, and interesting presentation. So take so it away, Bruno. You. I was told not to, to re-explain the model, so I will not do it. And uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it was very well done. So, uh, so let me say first, this is a very useful paper. So it starts with a quote from uh, my chapter of the handbook saying that we, we need a model like that. So it's, uh, it's most welcome from my perspective. We need model of asymmetric, asymmetric platforms. Uh, um, the main reason is uh, essentially competition policy issues. So for to do competition policy, we are easy to have large firms and we need models that are able to deliver prediction about the interaction between large firms and small firms. This is what the paper is doing. So uh, very briefly, there are two key assumptions in the model, uh, except this tour de force that is trying, uh, allowing to uh, transform the game into an aggregated form game is that network effects are not too large, which is important for the uniqueness or stability of the, uh, of the demand. And uh, also that network effects are homogeneous. Yeah. So uh, I would say the next step would be uh, try to, to work uh, whether this type of model is able to handle asymmetries or simple asymmetries, let's say one firm has bigger network effect. Uh, than the other, so that would be very useful because in practice, uh, this is the, sometimes what uh, what happens. <laughs> now, uh, so this once you have these two, this this uh, uh, so this type of model, uh, it, from my perspective, is very useful when we apply to the understanding the effect of asymmetries. Uh, so, what did I get from the model? Uh, so, uh, as a side command, uh, I found a bit too much of uh, one-sided network effect, uh, to too little of two-sided network effect. Mm -hmm. Many of the results are uh, for one-sided network effect, in fact, mm -hmm. but uh, as I spread in the text, it's not always clear what what are the, uh, what change when we move to two-sided network effect. Uh, what is interesting in the paper that should be developed, I think, is this, uh, there are two aspects. One is uh, how do you leverage, when you have a platform, a quality advantage on one side, say you have lower cost or higher. Uh, and, and there are several ways to do it. And it seems that what the paper, this model predicts is that you would tend to uh, leverage on exploiting cross-group network effect, uh, trying to. so. Uh, so, so when you look at the equations, there seems to be some complementarity, in particular if you have an advantage in the group that values a lot the participation of the other group, there seems to be some kind of complementarity between uh, the intrinsic value and the network effect, which can create a multiplier effect. And, and I think this uh, paper touched at that, but it could, it could go further into this uh, trying to 
uh, understand this uh, how this cross effects are, are going together. Uh, another thing that I was missing, which is a very basic uh, comparative static or comparison, is uh, how do you compare the equilibrium allocation with the efficient one? Oh. Uh, is a large platform selling too much, too little? Uh, on which side? Uh, we know in the corner model that the large platform tend to sell too little. Uh, is it the case here? Yeah, it's not clear to me, and would be good to. Uh, I think you can do you can do such a comparison, and that would be useful. Uh, the second thing that was novel to me is this: uh, the distortion associated with entry. Okay. So we are used to say there is fragmentation due to entry, uh, and that's a negative effect because of network effects that are fragmented. But here it's slightly different. So you gave one insight, which is uh, you may dis divert away some people who are creating values for others, but I'm, I was not completely convinced by this intuition. And, and another way to say is that if you manage to distort away or to attract uh, users that are generated large network effects, the other side may be forced to move us. But they don't like to move because they move to get the same network effect as before, but to a pl platform that is not providing uh, a lot of value to them. Uh, so this is a misallocation in a sense that is different than market fragmentation. You may not have fragmentation no, and right. you still have the negative effect of entry because uh, you may end up with. And that I think you, these are the two novel ones. Uh, the CISO effect is, is nice, but it's not uh, the first one. I think Martin has already one in the paper with Anderson. We have one with the corner model. So I will not uh, push too much uh, on this one. No. Uh, I would push a bit more when you read you. So you show it in the text, it's not as transparent as in the presentation. So it was better in the presentation where you show this price, uh, the margin equation that relates margin to quantity. Mm. Uh, mm. So it raised some question about the nature of the model. So if I'm right, uh, at, there is always one price that is above cost on any side, mm. which is uh, not a general property. So and we, uh, and I don't know what it brings. And it raises also issues about uh, empirical identification. So given this formula, mm -hmm. uh, can you still identify? And what can you identify in the model if I give you demand data and uh, price data but, uh, and try to do some kind of BLP analysis? And, mm -hmm. uh, so it may be worth thinking about, uh, about that. I, I don't know. But, uh, uh, what is really identified. So now uh, I have to stop soon. So I have two suggestions. Uh, one is to look at investment in quality by platforms. And uh, here the question is, uh, is the big become bigger? Do we have increasing dominance when you allow for uh, the platform to improve the quality? So they start from an asymmetric situation and they can improve. Do we get Decreasing dominance, increasing dominance, uh, mm. and, uh, and it's not clear when you uh, which one. So basically, which one has the highest uh, marginal gain in increasing quality? So it could be done with a model where you have symmetry on one side and you just look at the symmetry on the other side and uh, something tractable. Uh, the second is of course the most natural extension uh, actually. You put it in a title, but you don't provide it, which is multi-roaming. Multi-roaming, yes. Because you're doing interoperability, uh, compatibility, uh, but multi-roaming seems to be feasible. Maybe it's a bit more complicated because you need to, to be able to invert this matrix between the, right, with this H, and, the, and you have to find a clever way to, to do the multi-roaming so that you can invert. But if you can do that, that would be a, a big value added. Okay. Uh, and to conclude, so um, as I must say, uh, to my test, because uh, I'm thinking about antitrust of platforms, 
uh, there are many results that are one-sided and uh, you may try to get more results that are two-sided by simplifying in other dimensions. Keeping the two-sided market, but having a duopoly, there are many things could be done with a duopoly. Uh, that would simplify, or having symmetry on one side, but still two-sided market, uh, and uh, try to explore. And I think I got my five minutes. <laughs>